Hello, my name's James. I'm a portrait photographer from Portsmouth in the UK. You've probably not heard of me. I want to welcome you to this, my latest video. We are looking at portfolio reviews again. Uh, we've kindly had like, we've had a lot of submissions for people looking for portfolio reviews. So I'm trying to get through them as quickly as possible. Today, we're looking at Washington State based photographer, Debbie Gilman, who was brave enough to enter her images for critique. Uh, just had a look at her website here. Um, just looking at all of the portraits, nice big portraits on the front page, which I really, really like and a real, real variety in there as uh, she describes herself as sort of like a, a, a as, as coming from a, a military background her, her father was in the military that's why she's sort of living up there in Washington State uh, and 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 how she has a, a history of painting painting murals and an artistic sort of background there which is sort of coming across in the images here um, lots of real nice natural feels and really trying to capture moments as well which I like but trying to capture moments that can't be recreated that's the sort of overwhelming feeling um, uh, that, that we get uh, but what we're going to do is going to have a look at this the images that she submitted to us as, all, as ever we ask our photographers who want a photo critique to submit between 10 and 15 images we're going to look at them on the screen here now I haven't seen them except to download them uh, so all the reactions that you're going to see from me hopefully are spontaneous reactions to seeing an image uh, for the first time so let's start off with image number one image number one okay so we've gone into weddings here um, a, a, a kind of an interesting setting here uh, with the fountains on the right hand side. We're obviously near some sort of uh, port or dock here because we've got the big ferry in the background. A few interesting sculptures on this side. Um, uh, the, the, our attention is drawn to the to the bride and groom in the front there, and the pose like it's quite a, it's real like this is a difficult this is a difficult pose to do. Uh, in heels, uh, I should know. Um, <laughs> but I like the way that we've got the leg poking it and really showing off the, the, the shoes here. Sometimes in weddings with long dresses, the shoes, particularly the bride shoes, can get missed by photographers and not really made big a deal of. Uh, and I know how much effort like brides go into selecting the shoes that they're gonna wear for their wedding day and they want them shown off. Um, this little foot just poking down the bottom here, I just would have, just would have taking that out just click that out so we've got a nice nice simple clean sort of pose in there love the use of the flowers in the foreground and the embrace and the way that the, the bride's being held there is is is, is pretty nice uh, there uh, potentially uh, like i say embraces are really really difficult to capture and make them look completely natural potentially here just a look at having them slightly separate and just having a look at each other in the eyes rather than the actual kiss i don't know but we're just off the kiss there which is quite a nice moment to get when you actually get the kiss planted it can sometimes distort the face a little so quite a nice moment there what i would say overall though the overall composition is not really as strong and dynamic enough to draw attention enough into the foreground because there are so many distracting elements around the outside the sun peeking out over the top of the fountain here the rainbow banding on the front of the fountain with the moving water here the sort of blocky colors in this background fountain here can you see that where it's all gone a little bit muddy and a little bit blocky and we haven't got that much control over our colors the the, the ferry in the background bringing in greens with the with all the scaffolding and the bridge and the flags and all that kind of stuff and then sculptures and chairs and on, on this side and then all of the vegetation here and, and everything's just making for quite a messy composition and they're not particularly dynamically placed within the frame neither working on symmetry or on thirds we're kind of halfway between the two the real dynamism in this picture is the embrace is the tiling and is this line coming around here to the fountain this curved line here this shape which is creating a nice natural shape within the picture and potentially if we look at a slightly more simpler crop and trying to look at getting rid of those background elements although they may help may help take the tell the narrative when you've got things like those little sculptures those little chairs those little bits of vegetarian imitation and bridges and flags and all those little things in the background they're just distracting from this which is what we're trying to get this moment between a bride and a groom on their wedding day. But yeah, once again, good, good, good capturing of that moment there. Uh, next one here. So we've seen, I see a lot of, we, as photographers, we see a lot of takes on the wedding ring shot, you know, uh, lots of different, lots of different styles, lots of use of light to create shapes. You can get them sort of between, I've seen them between pages of a book and creating a love heart and all that kind of stuff. But this one, obviously we're looking at, we're looking at, uh, I guess a brand of M&Ms or some sort of suite in here. Um, with this macro photography as well, and we're, we're, when we're working with really, really shallow depths of field like we have, it's really important to take good care and control in keeping everything pin sharp. And what's pin sharp in this picture is the bride's glittery ring here and a smattering of the sweets through this line here. The groom's ring is actually out of focus. 
um, which doesn't help, particularly when the line of focus is bringing into is bringing into focus these smarties here, these sorry, these sweets here, and this lid in here. So although the idea is here to do something a little different, I just think maybe it could have been simplified um to, to and also just need a little bit more care and control over the technique because we've used such a wide aperture as well the background element of this jar is is completely blown out so we can't really see the sweet spilling out of the jar and similarly because we've used a wide angle lens the the lid here is bigger than the than the jar element in the background that it would go on so it's slightly distorting and I think I think maybe we try to do a little bit too much here, just a little bit. Um, plus we've got some reflection either from a light or from a window over here, which has given us a really big highlight patch over here, which is distracting as well as the dark patch over here. They're just leading to be in balance with the crop going through the jar as well. So just come out from this shot a little bit and experiment with a slightly longer focal length and experiment with, with, with different, with, with different apertures, you know, not everything has to be blown wide open. Um, sometimes, you know, with so many elements in the picture, it could be really, really dramatic to have everything pin sharp. Um, but, but once again, I've, I've been, I've been super critical on that one. Um, I think the idea to do something different, with these rings is really really commendable and obviously with these this is obviously some i say obviously this is probably some sort of table decoration and is very very personal uh, for the bride and groom so i would imagine that this would definitely make it into the album so one that the bride and groom would love oh now we're talking about a bit of drama now we've got a little now see see how see how this is this is night and day from the first shot that we reviewed because of elements within the picture because there are less elements in this picture and less elements in this picture is making it easier to tell the story and this is about the i mean look at the styling here of these guys first of all i mean who doesn't want to shoot a wedding look at that dress the back of that dress has been supremely well captured as well all of the uh Elements there are, are, are within tonal range. There's lovely detail in there when we're looking in nice and close. We can see all of the lace and all of the detail in there, which is really, really lovely. Slight spilling of light onto his trench coat here and slight blocking up of the blacks within the feet and the lower part there. So just a little bit more control on him really needed. But what a simple shot. It's, it's my natural instinct to sort of want to see this landscape because we are it's essentially a landscape photo with a bride and groom uh, in the foreground um but i think i love the bridge i love the use of the bridge i love the way it sort of goes in i just i'm not sure it needs the top and i'm just thinking about that now maybe it does i don't know maybe a change of angle maybe a slightly lower angle just to bring all these wooden wooden slats in in a little bit more in the foreground to make it even more dramatic sort of going off i almost want to make even more of this bridge but i love the way that we're positioned below the horizon as well so the horizon sort of adding an extra layer into the background so we are literally working with three layers here we've got the background layer there with the with the with the with the, with the, the land and the horizon right in the background with the sea you've got the mid-ground layer going into the foreground layer with the bridge and then you've got the couple there. Potentially, and just potentially, this is just a little thing. Maybe a little look at each other, I don't know. I don't know, I quite like the way that they're looking off into the background it, um, and, and into their onward journey, which is helping tell that story of marriage because marriage is obviously the, you know, the one of those steps along your journey uh, through life, I guess. So yeah, lovely, lovely shot. Okay, so we've captured a lovely moment here. And what 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 Debbie's done really, really well here is she's taken again, we, we talk about foreground, midground, and background. Um so your background here is this orchard in, in the background, which you can see with with I think believe I believe apples on the trees, I'm not sure. Your midground there is our subject in the middle, and then our foreground is this blurry foliage that we've got in the foreground. And because because our photographer has taken uh the step to sort of get in amongst the trees and to use that to frame the picture. So it looks like we're kind of we're we 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 we're, we're kind of uh, covertly looking at them, if that makes sense. So it's kind of it, it adds to the feeling of a natural photo. And brides and grooms these days, um, by and large, natural sort of imagery, I think, 
is 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 the most popular uh, form there. This tiny little bit of red on the left hand side is just knocking everything else because we've got this lovely palette of greens, a little smattering of yellows there with the fruit in the background, and then this lovely, lovely, lovely bed of lavender in in, in, in at the bottom here, particularly the bits that are going over a dress. I actually really like that. I think it's a lovely bit of attention to detail. And I think that red on that side, a little bit distracting, just knocking it out. Lovely little moment between the two of them. Lovely little hand placement here with the with the um, with the ring on there. Maybe just in future look to get him, get her just a pinch. If brides pinch that lapel, they just create a little bit more of a shape with the hand, showing off the back of the hand, and just gives it a little bit less of a flat side and more of a more of a curved side there. But if we look here, we can see just behind our bride is holding the bouquet just behind our groom, but it's just coming out. <laughs> of a rather, I would say, an unfortunate place there uh, behind him. So just drop that bouquet, lose it, if we're not gonna use it in this photo. I hear so much as well from like people that sell wedding dresses and, and people who work in that side of the industry, uh, how much they sort of like, they, they see these well lovely wedding photos, but they think, oh, why is the bouquet being held in front of it? I wanna see the dress, I wanna see the, and we've done that well here because we've controlled the tones again with regards to really seeing the detail in that dress, but that's just a little bit distracting in there. Other than that, really, really lovely bride and groom shot. So obviously a shot at an air show here and what a dramatic capture. What's something just a little bit different here? Let's just go in super close. Okay, um, so yeah, I mean, there's something here. I'm, I'm not sure the cropping is as dynamic as it possibly could be on this shot. The timing of the moment, impeccable absolutely impeccable and if this is caught in camera that is impeccable timing on this moment in terms of having both of those aircrafts at that exact moment conjoining and perfectly placed as one um it's just it's just sublime it really is i love the uh the the, the little trail going off of here from coming out of the back of the jets which is distorting the top of the trees and if we were to look at that as potentially a panoramic image where we take off the top and take off the bottom then we've got something a little bit abstract and what you can do in addition to that to make that a little bit more dynamic, potentially just these little bits of trees that are just coming out at the top of the aircraft, maybe just lose those altogether. Just have that real clean cut of sky above and trees below. Uh, but I think the dead space below here and the dead space above potentially, we've got a slightly more dynamic crop there. Have a little bit of a play with it. But in regards to capture in a moment, I mean, just in terms of timing, 10 out of 10. What a dramatic shot this is, goodness me. Okay, so we've got, I mean, well, wow. Um, so something I was something I was taught at sort of like a fairly young age with regards to photography. So if you're doing these dramatic landscapes and things like that, it really helps to have a person in there because a person in there allows the viewer to rationalize it in terms of sense of scale. Um, I think this shot here, I mean, well, taken from a long way away but look at the composition here look the breaking wave in the background when we actually go in we can actually see expression on his face which is great great marrying up of color as well let's not let's not let's not overlook this the fact that this sea is so blue in the foreground and the the windsurfer's sail there as this lovely little tinge of orange perfect complementary color to draw our eye in there we're pulled almost on the thirds there I'm not sure whether you can't just lose a fraction off the top of this image just to make it a little bit more dynamic. But what a what a real what a sense of drama and a sense of scale as well. He's so small in that photo and the and the waves look so big. It's a it's a really, really lovely image. Great, great, great capture, great timing again. Okay. So we're in maternity, and this is a really, really delicate maternity image. Um, we've got very uh, what I, I, I start off with what I absolutely love about it is is the subtlety of that background just that little bit of background just little bit of darkness just in the background there but everything is high key everything is so light everything is 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 per, is, 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 is subtly handled there the placement is a little off because we're running almost through the head there and potentially Potentially, we could either raise that up or lower that down just so it's not just running through the head. And we need a tiny bit of control of our whites. Where, this, where we're backlit and the sun's skimming across, particularly on the hand, on the dress, 
and on the top of the chest here, some of our white tones have just gone out of range into super highlights. And they've just come out and I just wanted to see a little bit more control because we've handled the dress impeccably here. And it's really difficult on the uh, on these um, on, on these location shoots to get that absolutely perfectly. But there are ways in Photoshop that you can look to do that. But in terms of like an image that I'm sure a, uh, a you know, a, a mum to be would love, I think this is this is pretty high up there. It's, it's a really lovely shot. Let's have a look at working on that composition. I'm not entirely sure the placement is as dynamic as it possibly could be for this shot. Again, we're neither on the third nor on the halfway. We're sort of moving in between the two. So let's have a look and see if we can sort of work something a little bit different there. Ah, wow, okay. Well, that's a striking image. Good connection. Good connection with the photographer. Looking straight out towards us here. I kind of, I was going to immediately pick up the hair and the hair is distracting where it's coming just over the lip and just down here. I actually quite like it over the eyes and stuff, but it's not as, I want to, if we've got such clean clarity with this, with this uh, shallow aperture, I really want to see like a clean face sort of coming through. I do like the placement of the body um, in relation to the camera, which is allowing our subject to turn her head towards us. And there's a really, really natural expression there naturally lit and actually the um the, the the catch lights are pretty well placed she's got something in her hair over here i don't know what it is just get rid of that a little bit of muck in the hair now when we're working on these um on these fine uh, uh these fine apertures with these shallow steps of the field what you'll find is that backgrounds obviously go blurry sometimes they can just go a little bit matted and a little bit textured um, and in this instance it's just got a little bit of a an odd rough texture to what should otherwise be a smooth backdrop and that's typically because there's sunlight hitting it or something or something in the background like foliage which is quite sort of quite textured in itself really um, and in this element I think it's just taking um, taking us away so if you can look in future potentially even having like so, posing posing our subjects there's so much space in the background and potentially even like a sky or something that's just a little bit more clean to give us that clean background rather than something that's got that sort of texture but once again what a that children looking straight at the camera looking happy you, you make a sale every time which is great <laughs> and i did see this one up on downloads now 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 this work this time i'm going to start with a negative it's really difficult to shoot these natural light portraits on grass um, when we're outside because grass when the light hits it particularly on a cloudy day it bounces back up gives us this really yellowy green reflection in the background and that's not being helped by the fact that he's wearing a green shirt which just makes that you know makes that doubly doubly more as impactful in terms of like the color so if we actually look at the tonality on the face I've got a little bit of grain in there first because I presume we're shooting on quite a high ISO on this one. Plus all of the light that's bouncing back up is coming up sort of green underneath the chin and underneath the eyes. Plus there's not really enough light. So it looks like he's backlit. We're looking at the hair here. So it looks like the light's actually behind him. So there's not really any light on the face. That's the negative. The positive is what an expression. What a moment and what an observation from this photographer. What an observation from Debbie. To, to really be in the right place at this time, to, 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 to be there with the guests being set up in the background, I assume for guest shots, and to have this, just to have this expression. It's just lovely and it's on the step and it's hands in the pockets and the, the look on the face. What a lovely, lovely moment. And these are the moments, these are the moments that make clients, your clients, recommend you to other, photo to, to other clients. 100% these are the moments because these are the ones that stick in the mind and these are the ones that they think are amazing and these are the ones where they see them all the time when they're at these events but there's never anyone there to capture them for them so what a great capture depth of feels too shallow again I just want to see a tiny bit we can't see anything of anyone in the background reacting to him and the bookend to this story is not not the, the the front end of the story is what he's doing the book end of the story is their reactions in the background and we can't see their reactions in the background and that would really help tell that whole narrative and that whole story but yeah what, what a great what a great capture i love it i believe this one if i'm not wrong is up on your facebook head or on your facebook group this is uh this is a really natural moment and I love, I've always loved shots of um, of people from behind because it helps, like 
when we talk about your bridge shot from earlier and we talk about how you you know that, that was helping tell a story because we're taking that walk with you and this in this instance we're not really taking the walk with you we, we the viewer here is almost acting like a parent seeing uh, their kid go off and just sort of going <laughs> stop playing with the seagull sort of thing i love the reflection on the on the on the on the bottom here it's a real shame that, re that the reflection uh, for our subject is cropped off here just at the neck and if we'd have come out a little bit more we'd have seen a full reflection going back and then again we don't really need, again we're, we're kind of not on the half not on the third with our subject our subject's in orange against a largely blue background again complementary colors working really really well but we're just off the half if we have a look at this what's that 21 so we're looking at 10 and a half 10 and a half is about there where that line is we're just off that half to make a perfectly symmetrical crop we could maybe lose a little bit off of that left hand side bring it in and make a more dynamic shot and again going back to the example with the aircraft maybe a panoramic in this instance potentially so first dance or uh, the, when we do the first dances, you know, we can often sort of hand over to parents or things like that. And, and, and you can get these lovely, lovely moments. I'm not I don't know what the relationship is between these two, but there's obviously a relationship there. And we're capturing in low light conditions, which is really, really challenging. Nice wide aperture start with let's start with some things that i think could be improved on this image i don't think it needs the vignette and i think the vignette is sort of taking away from it just a little bit just those darkened edges just look a little bit forced a little bit digitally added on nothing natural in that at all a few little highlights like this spot over here and this little spot over here just taking us out and i think you've got people behind looking on potentially a slightly either go one way or the other with this either getting super close or come out slightly wider to show what's happening in the background or going close to isolate this moment. In this instance, let's maybe look at isolating this moment because this little look from this gentleman here tells a hell of a story. And that is a hell of a moment. Lovely little connection with her leaning in. Love the little wedding band here with the little attention to detail. We're obviously shooting in um, in low light because we've had to we've not only got the high ISO with the brain but we've obviously got a little bit of movement here tiny little bit of movement around but we can forgive we can forgive our, we can forgive Debbie for that because it's such a keen 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 moment I think we've tried either this is a something we've removed on here just remove that little bit of black here I don't want to speculate as to what that is but I would just move that there because it's just a little bit distracting but again another one of those images that's going to get you recommended to other clients from this client 100% <laughs> I will say this I think like so this is another natural light shot what I will say is again we've got the hair coming across but that's fine uh, because it obviously looks like a windy day we're outside and that's what happens when you're outside um, uh, it, it, it feels a natural moment um, it, and I think there's a lot to like about it in terms of being in the moment and being spontaneous and capturing that we have a few highlight issues on the background here where we're just starting to blow out a little bit. I'm not sure this little wrangle around the, the neck is the most flattering use of a hand in a photo I've ever seen, but it is natural. Not convinced by the crop. The crop here, just cropping through the hand at the bottom. Let's just go in close here. See where this crop line is? Just, just below the elbow joint and just on the hand. It's just a little messy there. If we bring that up just a little bit, we might have something even more abstract because it is an abstract shot, this one. The reason why it's an abstract shot is we can't, we can't see the guy's face. And uh, there's, like I say, whether you like that or whether you don't, I think you can have a bit of leeway for that because we're trying to do such a natural environmental portrait. Um, but just re revisit that crop as it cropping maybe and have a little bit of look. Have a look in here, have a look at this hand and just make sure all of your whites are in because if they start to blow out, they're starting to distract. If we haven't got any detail in there, then we're not really showing off all of the elements of the picture as best as we possibly could. And here's our last one. Difficult to do these natural light portraits again inside. We've got, it's a very low light shot. And when we actually go in super close, let's just go in a little bit closer here. We start to see a little bit of sort of lines going across and where we haven't caught the detail. And the reason why we haven't really caught the detail of the skin and the back of the hair and why the back of the dress possibly isn't as well detailed as it possibly could be is because our light isn't on the right hand side as we look at it. The light is on the left hand side as we look at it. 
the light is coming through this window. Now we're looking out, but what are we looking out to? Well, there's elements of water and rain on the window, which is potentially helping tell a story. She's certainly got a pose that is defiant, I would suggest, uh, one way or the other, um, but we can't really see the face either. Now, what's she looking out onto? Well, there's a bit of decking, there's some chairs, a table, some, some vegetation again, a few trees, a few buildings in the background. But we're neither sort of looking out nor looking in or doing one thing or another. And that's exemplified by the 45 degree angle that we've taken. So instead of coming around all the way around to the side, so we're looking at a profile of our bride or coming all the way around the back so we can see everything around the back, we've chosen neither one nor the other. Couple that with the distracting elements of these sort of benches down on the side here, which isn't really giving us as clean a, a, a view as possible. I just think there's a lot more that could be potentially improved on this on this image. Um, I want to see something in there in terms of the composition or the cropping or the use of the light coming through. When we do these window shots, a really, really simple one to do is to come round so that we've got the window right on our shoulder here so that we're super close and so that we're looking down the side towards our bride shooting as a profile and then just having them to sort of turn their head slightly so that we're starting to work with the light with the light there so we've done well to try and capture all of the dress we've done well to put the dress on the floor to show it off in all of its glory but i just think there are far too many distracting elements in the background again and i think the lighting just could be improved on this one just by the position of you uh, as a photographer on this so I want to thank Debbie for submitting her portrait images to us for Critique. A real joy to see those. And just, again, amazing for me that I get the opportunity to see images from people on the other side of the world uh, and, and to share sort of like a little bit of opinion on them and hopefully uh, give, give you a different aspect and a different way of looking at things, uh, which is really, really cool. If you've liked the video, then please like and subscribe at the bottom. You can share it with any of your photographer or non-photographer friends. If you would like a portfolio review yourself, if you are a photographer and you would like to submit your images for portfolio review, you can do. Just forward them to portraitofarestler at gmail.com or follow me on the Instagram and the Twitter at y2jimbob. Send me a message through there and I'll be sure to get back to you. And as ever, all the very best.